Hey everybody, this video is part of our full length The Onside Kick podcast. You can find that on Blog Talk Radio, iTunes, you can pretty much find it anywhere. So we don't care where you listen. Just stick around and check it out. This podcast is brought to you by Most Valuable Podcasts, leading the league in podcasting entertainment. What's up, what's up, everybody? Ricky Widmer here, along with Sean Anderson. Hello. And he's not dubbing the E's because Mark I could dub and them Dave means. had already dubbed the E's earlier in the evening. We are recording this late, late into the wee hours of Monday evening. That's funny, though. Mark's got two E's. Uh-huh. Dave's got Dave, like the E in yeah. Dave, and then Oster, the E in the Oster. E and Oster. And I got two E's as well. Do crazy, you? Yeah, crazy. Sean and then Anderson. The world's one, right? just crazy, guys. I only it's have, so nuts. I only have one your dick. I mean, two E's you if you count Rick E, Brent, it's a Y. Brandon's got no E's. I, I'm going to count it and neither, E and a half. And Mike's I'm going to count E and a half. And Mike's got one E, so you can yeah. take some of those E's. So I can take some of those E's, but we are here for a special onside kick because I came in, Mark and Dave did a great podcast, talked about some great things. But there were, bears. there were two things that really were on the docket that I'm like, you know what? We have to hit. Sean's gracious enough to be on with me because you have yet to eat. Mm-mm. You have yet to eat. No, so, I'm starving. So Sean's doing this on an empty stomach, almost mm-hmm. 24 hour empty stomach, just showing you the kind of determination we have here at MVP for you guys because it is draft week. But this podcast, we're basically hitting just two things. One, Miles Garrett, is he going to be a bust? Mm-hmm. And then we're going to look at apparently today it was dropped here on the score in Chicago. Draft Scout saying that if Christian McCaffrey gets to the Panthers, they're going to grab him. At number eight. Is it Matt Miller from Bleacher Report? Because it, I, I the six score usually has him on there. It was not Matt. Okay. It was not him. Just I, wonder. Well, I'll get you the name when we do that right, segment. Just wonder. But we're going to look at Miles Garrett first. And Sean, mm-hmm. I'm going to be honest. I'm just going to pitch it right to you. Warrant set came out this week. Well, before this week. Yeah. It was Sunday. And basically said that he does not think Miles Garrett should be number one and that he is going to be a bust. What do you think? Is Miles Garrett going to be a bust if drafted at number one? See, I think I think it's it's tough to say this guy's going to be a draft number, you know, a bust right mm-hmm. away. Um, I did call it with Jamarcus Russell. What uh, that was ten year old me said Jamarcus <laughs> Russell was going to be a bust. Um, but see, with Miles Garrett, it, it's tough to say. Um, that he's going to be a bust. I mean, you look at the biggest bust of Reese. I mean, you look at Ryan Leaf, you look at Jamarcus Russell. Those two guys were lazy. So, I mean, at least um, I think, you know, someone bringing it up, I think Warren Sapp's definitely not the first one to mention it, that uh, Miles Garrett might be lazy. Um, I I think that's something to worry about, at least. I think that's something that teams are Mm -hmm. considering. But I wouldn't say Miles Garrett will be a bust if he is a bust. Um, I don't think it will be because of his motor, because you look at his motor, he's constantly fighting out there. He might take some plays off there, but you've, we've heard that about prospects before, that they might be taking plays off in college. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think with the NFL, that can either be hidden or, you know, when they're on, they're on. Playoff games, I think, are different. I think Miles Garrett, uh, if he's going to be a bust, it will be because of, you know, injuries or something out of his control. Because I look at his ability, you look at his ability to, uh, you know, run, uh, uh, pa- uh, rush the passer, he is, is just phenomenal. I mean, this guy's a beast. You haven't seen anyone built like him that can attack like him I mean his ability to swim his ability to spin off of linemen I mean he just looks so fast but also he looks patient I mean he's got the whole package and I I can see where laziness might come into the factor of being a bust but Mm -hmm. I don't see him being lazy so I don't think he's going to be a bust uh, because of laziness and I don't think he's going to be a bust at all I'm on that same side too I'm on the side where and you guys will see this week I am getting out my final mock draft mm-hmm. of the year it'll be a full two round mock draft no surprise number one pick overall is miles garrett yeah. because of what you said this is the clear choice like maybe the only thing and i have said this in the past the only thing that would dethrone miles garrett from the number one pick is if there was a quarterback like andrew luck like a sam darnold who we're expecting mm-hmm. to see next year like a john elway that like matt cor- stafford yeah. th- matt stafford that quarterback where it's like that's the guy you take. He is the guy you build. The Peyton Mannings, the guy you build your franchise around. Well, we don't have that in this draft. Now, the thing that I look at and mm-hmm. the thing that we pull out from Warren Sapp is really calling him lazy. I want to throw this out to you. What other former number one overall pick, who was a defensive end, 
was also called lazy in the sense of he had the same criticism as, oh, well, he might not be a great player at number mm-hmm. one because he takes off plays, Jadavion Clowney. I was going to bring him up. I, yeah. I didn't know if that was exactly him, but I remember them talking about him, him taking that plays off. That was one of his key consistent. criticisms was yeah. that he takes off plays in college, and look at how he's done. Well, that's the thing. I mean, I, the only thing that's held him back is, is injury. injury. So I think if we're answering the question, will – Miles Garrett be a bust. I mean, he doesn't have mm-hmm. superb dur- durability. He's been banged up before. That's what I think will hold him back because Clowney, he was looking like a bust his first couple of years. He wasn't looking like the stud he mm-hmm. was looking like at the end of the season. I mean, once he's gotten healthy, he's been a force to be reckoned with. And it's different once you get to the NFL. When you're looking at these players, I mean, you look at Jadavion Clowney, I mean, he wasn't a, a guy that was, you know, competing for national championships. You look at Miles Garrett, he wasn't competing for national championships. So, mm-hmm. hey, maybe I will take a, a playoff because I don't know if my, my foot's 100%. Or I feel a cramp coming on. I don't want to push this, uh, push this further, and maybe I won't be going number one because mm-hmm. maybe it's not a cramp. Maybe I'm about to like tear my ACL. I know you can't really prevent that, but uh, you know, there's there's things where you look at these guys and there's not a lot of incentive for them to play in college because say they do go down, they go out, they don't have a salary. If you have if you're the number one pick, you're going to get a ton of salary coming after you, whether you're a bust or not. I mean, look at Jamarcus Russell. I mean, if that guy saved his money, he's been well off. So. I look at this, and I, I think that it, it's tough to call a player lazy because when he's on, he's on. He's not pl- taking plays off. He's he's motivated. Mm-hmm. And I think when you give a player like that a contract and, and you give a player saying, all right, you're our franchise guy, out of you know 256 players or how many picks there are, we picked you to be the first guy, I think that really motivates a player. And, and if you see, you know, obviously Cleveland hasn't been good in a while, but if you put Miles Garrett in a situation and Hugh Jackson can say, all right, son, you look at you look at what we have on our defensive side. You look at what we can be. We can be a fantastic team. We need you to step up. Um, I think that Miles Garrett will be able to do that. We saw that with Clowney once he was fully healthy. And I think also having a mentor like J.J. Watt can help. So maybe a guy like Jamie Collins could help Miles Garrett get there and kind of get over the lazy comments that Warren Sapp made. Well, and I, the thing that just pops into my head is a part of this, more with the comments from Sapp, mm-hmm. the thing that I think about is... We have this. It, I'm going to relate it to something we've talked about, you and I, on the fast break with Dave when it came to the rest in the NBA. We always talk about, oh, well, LeBron takes days off, but, you know, MJ never took any days yeah. off. That's what I think we're having here is, I mean, now a lot of college players are probably thinking, hey, you know what? I ain't getting paid for this. The big goal is to get that paycheck yeah. in the NFL. If I take off a play here or there, that's going to be fine. Plus, my team's going to be fine because I'm so good on the plays while I'm there. Back in Warren Sapp's day, back in the old days, you played every down. You gave it your all every single play. But I know uh, someone will correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure Warren Sapp went to Miami. So it's Mm -hmm. not like he was playing on a bum team that he was going to be playing in the Cotton Bowl. or or the uh, Warren Sapp's thing was more off-the-field issues when he was coming out. But But, uh, but Clowney and and mm -hmm. Garrett don't have that. Uh, You know, Clowney was playing in the Outback Bowl against Michigan and made a statement there. And had fucking hit. Yeah, but I mean, how many... The play, helmet rattler. <laughs> how many plays do you think he took off in that game? I mean, Warren Sapp was on the U. He was a yeah. part of the most historic uh, college football program, at least if you take the 80s to the 90s. Warren Sapp was playing mm-hmm. on a national championship level, uh, caliber team. I mean, he wasn't playing with scrubs. Mm-hmm. He wasn't playing on a bad team. He was motivated to get a ring. He was motivated, like most of those Miami, Florida players were, to put it all, put their all in there because they were winning one for Miami. They were well, winning one for Florida. And not just that. I'm glad you bring that up because the thing that I think about, you asked me... Before we started, oh, what's your favorite 30 for 30? Looking back at those 30 for 30s, what did most of those players on that U team have that drive Mm -hmm. to be the best that they can be, eventually get to the NFL because of where they came from? Like the whole Snellenberger thing was we're going to rope off Miami, and that was obviously players who were in low poverty areas and really you saw it were fighting for what they had earned eventually in their NFL career. I think this is just something where Warren Sapp doesn't see that same drive in Miles Garrett, who comes from a different generation, Hmm. and calls it lazy and bust, and then boom, 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 we're talking about it today. I think it's just kind of like when your grandpa's like, oh, these damn kids are on their phones (laughs) 24-7. I didn't have it like this. I had to walk five miles with no shoes on to go get a gallon of milk that was Mm -hmm. a nickel. Like I think it's kind of something like that where, you know, yeah, grandpa, but technology has developed. We know more (laughs) about the sport 
It's not just 90s football mm-hmm. where it's like, all right, chop blocks and helmet to helmet hits because, hey, we're going to make a highlight reel and put it out on VHS of crazy college football hits. Mm-hmm. This is something where the game is adapted to both the speed of play and, and something where you know money has taken over like most things in America. You know, it, We're a capitalist society. I'm not trying to get some you know, super weird on here, but I mean, you know, Miles Garrett sees an opportunity to make a ton mm-hmm. of money Especially early. the number one pick in the draft. Yeah, so I mean, if he's taking off a game, one one game, uh, one play, uh, you know, every set of downs against mm-hmm. Ole Miss or Kentucky. Well, Jesus Christ, sorry, sorry, he's not putting it all against Kentucky. Not even I mean, that against the FCS teams that we yeah. see some of these teams play. I mean, there's something where if if it's strictly based off of you know he is a player that takes plays off, and I'm mm-hmm. calling him lazy. And I don't think he should be number one. I think that's bullshit, Warren Sapp. But if it's something where he might know Miles Garrett mm-hmm. deeper and might know him just as a lazy person, might just see him consistently. Mm-hmm. Um, I then maybe that I would take this in, 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 you know more into consideration, but uh, I mean Warren's I don't know I mean I don't know how well my, my, you know Miles Garrett and Warren Sapp get along. I'm gonna go ahead and say this: the Browns need to draft Miles Garrett I agree. at number one yeah. because you want to know, and this is my prediction: what will happen if they pass on him? They will go ahead and probably take Mitch Trubisky or even Deshaun Watson. Let's say they take Deshaun Watson. I think it's more of Mitchell. Let's say they take a quarterback. Mm -hmm. Right now, the Niners, it is very, very, it's being rumored that they are very high on Mitch Trubisky. So what I think will happen is if they pass on Garrett, they'll probably go Watson. Trubisky goes to the Niners. Who does Miles Garrett fall to who plays the Browns? And Miles Garrett said, if you pass on me, I will make your team pay. The That's Bears. what I think will happen. It's the Bears. And, and I, that game, I will go out and buy a Miles Garrett jersey. And that game, yeah. he will just wreak havoc on the Browns. So if on the Browns, just draft him, and then you don't have to worry about it. Well, and, and one thing, I mean, you look at you look at the Browns situation. If you want to get a quarterback, okay, I understand mm-hmm. that. Um, but you have to be set that Trubisky is the guy. That mm-hmm. Trubisky is you know that once in a lifetime guy. Because right now there are four quarterbacks, five quarterbacks, I think. Uh, if I if I no no four quarterbacks, four. Kaiser, Mahomes. Uh, Trubisky, Watson and, Trubisky. And, and, and Watson, and you look at all of every, everyone's rankings, whether mm-hmm. they're uh, someone on ESPN or CBS or some guy on Twitter. Yep. It's it's just it's everywhere. It's it's mm-hmm. Trubisky at one or Trubisky at four and Kaiser at one. I mean, mm-hmm. it's a, a mixed jumble. So you need to be set that he's the number one guy to pass up a guy like Miles Garrett because we can see the effect that he has. Um, that a player like him can have on a team. I mean, you look at Von Miller, you look at Jadavion Clowney, and um, I know you brought up something about uh, Colin Cowherd mentioning the players from Texas A&M. Well, he I, mentioned that today on his show, and I mean, Von, I, Von Miller's a player from Texas A&M, and I don't know if he's ever taken well, a day off. And I looked at it, and I mean, Von Miller from 2008, really the ones that he was bringing up and he was looking at is like the Ryan Tannehill, the Johnny Manziel, well, Ryan Tannehill, the Luke Jokel. The um like the guys who were drafted high that like there are a few of these guys in the program that have been drafted and haven't done well. But Von Miller, you name one. You know who else was another one that I had? Mike done? Evans. Mike Evans. Mike Evans, Evans is phenomenal. It's but, one but, of the- but also, you look at Tannehill, once he finally got a quarterback coach... A he quarter- started doing well. He was great in the last <laughs> half. Miami Dolphins fans were like, hey, Tannehill looks great. He was also a guy who was converted as a wide receiver mm-hmm. to a quarterback. Uh, you look at Jokel, he was a guy that was just completely over it. And Johnny Manziel had no, no reason to go in the number one, no, yeah. uh, no, the first round of that draft. He just had a name to him. So, like, Coward picked three, I would say, of two mm-hmm. good uh, prospects out of there, but I would say Tannehill's on the rise, Von Miller's on the rise, and Mike Evans is a, is a phenomenal player as well. So I don't really take that into consideration. I look at Von Miller um, as probably the the guy you can compare Miles Garrett to the most, at least from a background situation, mm-hmm. positional wise. Um, I think obviously Von Miller's smaller, um, and, and Garrett's you know what six four two seventy five, uh, Von Miller six three two fifty or something. Um, but you know you still see the speed, you still see the the ability to make plays like Von Miller. I look at Garrett as a can't miss prospect. I and do too, I, and I don't think that you know. You, I don't think that the Browns can pass on him because you go Trubisky. If he fails, you're just adding to another name to that T-shirt list. You're just adding another name to the mm-hmm. what 26 years of, of and irrelevance. You, and you have two quarterbacks on the roster right now that you can at least see if you can work with. Exactly. You, you have to, Kessler. You have Brock the Cock. Cockadoodle do. I, I don't know about Cockadoodle do, but I mean, you, look at, you, <laughs> you look can at, at least work with. Yeah, them, I mean, or you'll, try to. But the thing, at least you can do is you can at least uh, you know save up for that number one mm-hmm. pick. And one thing that Dave mentioned on the Browns draft needs. Um, was that you know you can take a guy like Garrett, 
change your defense, and then wait till next year. A guy like you mentioned, Sam Darnold, you can mm-hmm. go and just get him next year. So I think there's something well, where— assuming that you're the worst team. Yeah, well, it's the Browns. The Jets might be worse. It's the Browns. Um, you look at you know, all of this, though, <laughs> I just think that ultimately the Browns can't miss and can't pass up a guy mm-hmm. like Miles Garrett because he just looks so explosive on defense that he can be a game-changer like a Von Miller, like a Khalil Mack. He can be mm-hmm. a game changer like those guys. And the reason why I would look at it is not just on the fact that he is the clear talent wise number one prospect to mm-hmm. me in this draft. Like, I'm going to spoil some of my mock draft for everyone, oh, but no. there is an option or a scenario where the Browns can get Miles Garrett number one. Yeah, Mitch Trubisky might be off the board, but at 12, there's a good chance that Watson could be there and you can get your quarterback with Miles Garrett. In round one, if you really wanted to, if you really wanted to. I still think there's a good possibility if there are no trades Mm -hmm. and no one trades up or trades down, that I think that Trubisky can still be there at 12 because I look at uh, Browns, I think Garrett, and then Mm -hmm. I think I look at the 49ers, I wouldn't be shocked if they go for a safety. I mean, you look at a guy like John Lynch, they still need a safety there. You look at John Lynch, a former safety, he might fall in love with a guy like Jamal Adams or Malik Mm -hmm. Hooker. You look at the Bears, or or they might even go like uh, I don't think the Bears go at number three. I don't think do they mean? draft a quarterback at three. No, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. I, I think if Adams is there, they'll go Adams. You look at Jacksonville, they'll they probably go D-line. One. Um, uh, I forget. You got the Titans after that. Titans They've don't got need Mariota. A, yeah, Titans don't need a quarterback. I mean, the— Jets, maybe? The Jets could, but the Jets, the thing is they've got— The thing that's going to be interesting with the Jets is they've, they've now got McCown, and it's going to be interesting to see if they say, let's draft a quarterback— Let's mm-hmm. say Mitch is off the board. If they say, let's draft Watson, or you know what? Let's wait. Even if we suck, we can get one of the quarterbacks next year. They could draft one. The Panthers don't need one in the top 10. The Bengals Chargers don't need, one. don't need one. The well, Bengals. The Chargers might be an interesting one just because if they're trying to find a replacement for Rivers. I think they grab one in the second round. They'll That's go fair. for like a seat. If Hooker or Adams is there yeah. at seven, it's going to be hard not to use one or of those a, guys to Lattimore. replace Weddle. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, you, I mean, they need outside help. I mean, the, Brandon Flowers was bad. The one team that kind of throws a wrench into those plans for the um, for the Browns for me yeah. is the Bills. If the Bills really think like, you know what, we do have Tyrod, but eh, fuck it, we're gonna go quarterback to surprise yeah. everyone. I, I don't know. I think I think that's a team that could wait to the second round too. I, I, think I, so too. I think you look at that and you need more help on the wide receiver spot. So I just still think there's a, a possibility that Trubisky mm-hmm. might end up to the Browns if there are no trades. I or still Watson, think I still think, or. Yeah, I still think a team might get you know salivating in the mouth. Like mm-hmm. Trubisky's still there, they might move up again. Uh, but the Browns could even do that too. They have a lot of uh, mm-hmm. a, a lot of options to move up. So if they feel like Trubisky might get stepped on, they can move up to twelve to you know. Jump, uh, jump the the Jets or something. Mm-hmm. Maybe tra- trade back with the Titans because I know the Titans yep. might be a team that might want to move back uh, because they don't need a, a pressing option mm-hmm. early on. Because if Lattimore's gone before them, I think corner's the biggest need for them. It's really at and then that they need point, wide receiver, but they got the 18th pick. Yeah, it's one of those things yeah. where at five they go, you know, are we going to take? Is Corey Davis really a number five pick? Could we trade back? There are things that could happen there, but. Just to end things, I think Miles Garrett, the for sure number one pick, and the Browns would be idiotic. The Browns would be Brownsy not to pick him number one. I would be. I, I, I 100% agree with you, and I think to add on to that, Warren Sapp was a terrible analyst himself. Um, so I think if you're taking Warren Sapp's opinion uh, as the reason why you're not going to pick a guy like Miles Garrett, I think that would be very ill advised. I would like to think that the uh, the Wolverine Hugh Jackman, or Hugh Jackson as some call him, has done his homework a lot better than we have. But this is where you guys come in. Let us know down below. Hey, and at least um, Warren Sapp doesn't have the hooker pro- uh, Miles Garrett doesn't have the hooker problem like Warren Sapp does. Yeah, there you go. He doesn't have that. Let us know down below what you guys think. Where should Miles Garrett be drafted? Well, really, should he be one or should he not? And if he is number one, will he end up being a bust? Let us know down below. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. And don't worry, there is plenty more where that came from. You guys can check it out right over here. Click that video, start watching it, and just stick around on Most Valuable Podcasts.